Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night Overtime. It is week number five in Georgia, week four in the state of Florida. And this week, kind of a strange one. 11 teams off this Friday night. But a lot of other squads, they're still playing football. I'm sports director Allison Posey. That guy over there, he is Dom Tibbetts. Some of those teams playing in big region or district games, Dom. Yeah, Monroe and St. John Paul II, both in 2A region one two years ago. These teams had a combined four wins. Now, they're definite players. Playoff contenders. They sure are. To win that top seed in the region, they got to get through each other. Monroe at St. JP2. It's our Friday night overtime game of the week. Now, last year, Monroe, they had an undefeated season. The Panthers made it to the regional semifinals. This game so big, being played at Florida High due to more capacity. Panthers on the scoreboard first. Brantley Bellamy, it's good. Three points. JP2 on top three, nothing over the Bobcats. And if you like defense, this was the game for you in the first half. I don't Monroe mind it. Trying to make something happen. Avery Howard packing the sack lunch. Bobcats returning the favor soon after all over. Tremaine Hughes Taking Look at that, gobbled down. up. Second quarter action, Bobcats driving. Makari Vickers all over this ball, coming up with the interception. And that puts the Panthers in beautiful field position. So uh, would we see the scoreboard light up before the half? Uh, I don't think so, Allison, because the Bobcat <laughs> defense shutting it down, taking down Hughes again. again. The offense waking up in this one in the second half, and Monroe comes out on top 19-9 over St. John Paul II, After a huge left. win. After I left, again. Of course, right? <laughs> Lincoln Trojans, a two-game win streak at Mosley tonight for a 6A battle. Second quarter, Lincoln down 14 nothing. Perry Fisher doing it himself, 32 yards down the field, and he'll finish it off, punch it in one yard for the score. Lincoln on the board, they're down 17 to four, seven to four, excuse me, but Mosley, they'll answer back. Cole Horton looking, finds Josiah McCall. What a catch, and it's good, 4-6, 21 to seven. Mosley, that be your score at the half, and it's a tough night for Lincoln AP. They're on the road, and they'll fall 42 to 14. The Brantford Buccaneers at home against Zarephath Academy. They have shut out back-to-back -back opponents in the box, also undefeated. Challenge tonight, though, down 12-zip. The box starting the comeback. Kyson Johnson lobs it to Bodie White. Brantford down six now, up 14-12 to in the second. Jumping ahead, the Brantford defense coming up big, recovering a fumble in the middle of the field. White gets to work again on the ensuing box possession. Can't Faking bring a him down. Of guys out. Sets up Brantford and Eagles territory and they would score to finish off that drive. Johnson to Nathan Hill. Branford, they are staying perfect, prevailing 32 to 24. Might have to start calling them Champa Bay now, maybe. <laughs> well, let's head north to Georgia and the Mitchell County Eagles. They've won two straight. Brooks County looking for their second straight win after topping Cook at home last week. And a pitcher perfect night in Camilla. Go check that out. It doesn't get much better than that. It was a perfect weather, perfect conditions. And we start with four minutes left in the first. Eagles driving and Jeremiah Jackson rolls and finds to Semi and Daniels. But the big play, but that drive would stall shortly after, opening up more opportunities for the Trojan. First play, second quarter, Jamal Sanders. On the money to ooh, Tremaine ooh, Dems ooh. for six. Mitchell blocks a PAT. It stays 24 nothing, but not for long. Sanders deep in the red zone, calling his own number. He'll trot into the score. 30 to zip at this point. Brooks County running away with it. 46 to nothing. A shutout win Shut for the Trojans tonight. Win. Colqua County at home against Heritage. We picked this one up in the first quarter. Packers already up 7 to nothing. Heritage is QB. Barrett Hunt dropping back, rolling left, and he is sacked on the play Can't by the run Packers. From a Packer. Julian Harper after a bad punt. Colquitt's Nico fan faking the handoff, rolling left, throwing to Landon Whoop. Thomas. He does the rest of the work. It's 14 nothing Pack. A little bit later, Packers handing it off to Chad White. The third touchdown of the first quarter. And guess what? This is another shot. Out. Packers 55 to nothing. The big win. Georgia Christian made their move to GISA this spring, facing Terrell Academy tonight on the road. First snap, Lawrence Carpenter drops back, tosses one middle of the field to Shenard Pittman. He'll waltz in for a touchdown. PAT no good. 6 0 Eagles. Next offensive possession for Terrell Carpenter with the quick out. He's going to find his receiver, Jackson Jenkins, gets the sideline. And then watch this one. He's going to go a little physical, lowers the shoulder. And then a couple plays later, let's just finish it off for Terrell Academy. Why don't we? Carpenter hands it off to Andy Alston. Up the middle, no contact, easy score for the Eagles. 47-14, Terrell Academy cruises. Hey, cheerleaders, take us the break. You're watching Friday Night Overtime on ABC 27.
Welcome back to Friday Night Overtime. The Childs High School Marching Band, our ABC 27 Band of the Week. And kind of cool there, the band, it was Military Appreciation Night tonight at Childs when Childs hosted Madison County. The band honoring all branches of the military, so playing a lot of songs are relevant to the military tonight, which is pretty cool. Now, you love to see it. Love yeah. to see a little patriotism. Now, we've talked region games. A region game, that's a rivalry game, and that's a lot more <laughs> we have to get to tonight. Absolutely. Starting with the team that band was playing for tonight. Like I said, the Childs Miles Timberwolves Military Appreciation Night at home, still looking for that first win of the season, hosting Madison County. Six minutes left in the second quarter. Trent Hartung stepping back, finding Jalen Jones for a quick pass. Good enough to move forward. Next play for the T-Wolves. Hartung handing it off to Travius Jones, Whoop. and he is gone. It's their second touchdown Catch of me if the you can. game. Because you can. On the extra point, 14-0 Timberwolves lead. The Cowboys trying to answer back here, but uh. And not going to go as planned after the made extra point here. The center snapping the ball a little bit too far, and they lose yards afterwards. Childs holds on for their first win of the season, and it is a big one, too, over a very good Cowboy squad, 20-14. to 14. North Florida Christian at home for the first time this season, hosting Taylor County. Go to the first quarter. Eagles try an onside kick, and it worked. The Eagles, oh, they'll nice recover the ball generation. and take over on downs the following play. J.P. Pickles Best drops back, voids the defense, <laughs> throws it deep to Traylon Ray, who catches it nice. in the end zone catch. with a two-point conversion. No good. Doesn't matter. It's an awesome catch. <laughs> Six-nothing Eagles. Bulldogs take over on downs, and Ryan Hamilton drops back, connects with Kingston Williams. That puts the Bulldogs on the board, and afterwards, they'll go for two, and they'll get it. So it's 8-6 Bulldogs. Then this one back and forth, a whole game. It got settled in overtime where NFC wins at 28 to 26. The McLean Marauders, another team that hasn't played at home all season. That changing tonight. McLean playing at home, Frank Shaw Field against Walton. The Marauders sporting the red, white, and blue, also honoring the U.S. of A. Third quarter action, McLean trailing 20 to nothing. Walton looking for the end zone once again, but McLean all over this one. Almost picked off. Uh, almost uh, uh, so not today. Close. Not but my it secondary. It doesn't matter. The Braves get within the five, and then Keontae Miller, this guy is built. Built like a lineman, sealing the deal he is a bowling ball. Can't be brought down. It's 27 nothing Walton. Ensuing kickoff, Grady Brown, healthy return here puts McClay at about midfield. But Walton just too much tonight for the Marauders. Braves they get the win on the road, 34 to six. Sneeds Pirates 2-0 on the year, facing a good Holmes County squad on the road. Blue Devil start with the ball, but not for long. Colby Jones to Colton Separis. He's blindsided, and that ball snatched up by Jason Patterson. As Sneeds, they're looking to capitalize, but Holmes County says, not in our house, not tonight. Not Patterson looking house. to go somewhere. That pass intercepted by Ooh, Junior Hunter off. Duncan. Three names, interception for the Blue Devils. That makes it two interceptions in the first two minutes. Pirates, they aren't discouraged. They'll score early second quarter. Patterson's going to go for a long oh, touchdown run. That extra going. point block making it 7-6. Holmes County, your winners tonight. They'll pull away late 34-13. Not bad. On this Friday, we are getting in on those social media trends. How about a flashback Friday? R Throwing it back to 24 hours ago. Rickards at Crestview. Raiders trailing just before the half. Michael Townsend finds Makai Brown, who does the rest of the work. Rickards takes the 10-8 lead at the half. Second half action. How is this for a highlight? Lionel Whitaker, he is going. He is going. And he is, you know the rest. Gone. gone. I did it. Kickoff return. Raiders led 17 to 14 in the third quarter, and they would close it out from there. 31 to 21, the final score. Rickards now three and one on the year. So we got a little bit of time left to close out this show, Dom. Let's talk about the weekend. I think everybody is in action this weekend. Yeah, it feels like we got football. We got three football games: Florida State, FAMU, and Valdosta State. We've even got some soccer. Florida mm -hmm. State opening up a ACC conference play against Boston College. It's a jam-packed weekend, but that's what's great about this time of the year. There's always something going on. Yeah, Florida State obviously looking to rebound off of these two losses that they've had. They are on the road at Wake Forest uh, at Saturday, 3.30 kickoff time. So they will play Wake, looking for that first win of the season after losing to Notre Dame and, of course, Jacksonville State. And we've talked to this team all week, Dom. I know you were there at Coach Norvell's press conference on Monday. What was he saying? Uh, you know, I guess the first thing is obviously you have to 
understand the fact that the Jacksonville State game was early questions, and, and he's gotten to the point where his team – put it, I think, out of reach by Tuesday. It's out of their minds. Now the focus is going against a Wake Forest team, which, quite frankly, they're 2-0 for a reason. They don't make a lot of mistakes, and Mike Norvell and his guys, they know that. So it's got to be a clean game, and Wake Forest is becoming an atmosphere that's really hard to play in. So, again, it's a tough challenge, but Norvell thinks his guys are going to rise up to it. And really, I mean, it's comeback season for a reason, right? This is the, the kind of the game the Knowles need to go and get a big one in Winston-Salem. And, who knows? Maybe they can do it. And if they do this, Allison, you got to think their season's right back on track. Uh, you would think so, yes. Fam, you on the road at South Florida. That's a big game. When we talked to Willie Simmons the other day, he was saying this game is personal for him. Uh, USF's head coach, Jeff Scott, they actually played together at Clemson. We have two Ooh. local guys, BJ Daniels, Ernie Sims, who coach at South Florida. So a pretty fun game there. And of course, Valdosta State, they are rolling 104 to 14, the combined score. They're at Albany State tomorrow night. That's where we will be. So tune into ABC 27 for all things Florida State, FAMU, Valdosta State football. And for high school football, check out the website, WTXL.TV. See ya.